coastal and offshore waters of British Columbia are home to many species of whales. Let's take a closer look at the world of whales and how we study them. Well, um, a whale, for example, with an orca, it only spends probably 5% of its time at the sea surface. And, and since that's the only time we can really see them, um, we're pretty limited in, in terms of what we can um, what we can study, they just come up, they take a breath, and then they, they go back down. So we can't really study much about their behavior just visually. So what we, what we use is passive acoustics. And passive acoustics means you just listen to what they're doing down there. We use hydrophones to study orcas because they can get a different kind of data than photo identification would get or visual surveys would get and also because it isn't possible to do visual surveys for such an extended amount of time or for example at some moments of the year when the weather is not very good to go out at sea on boats. The large baleen whales like the blue whales and the fin whales, um, those animals produce sounds that are almost below our, our hearing as human beings. And, but the low frequency hydrophones can detect them uh, at really long ranges. The high frequency hydrophones uh, are, are looking for different um, uh, acoustic signatures. The, the, they, they can detect the signatures of naval sonars, for example, or, um, or dolphins, or orcas, or sperm whales, um, and uh, shipping noise. Makes complete sense. If whales are spending 95% of their time underwater, then hydrophones are a great way to gather information. So what have we discovered from this research? Since we started using hydrophones, we have gained valuable knowledge about orcas. The first one that I can think of is their vocalizations and discovered that they have different dialects that was kind of a revolution in the acoustic science of killer whales. The hydrophone data is used by the whale researchers to understand when are the whales coming through the area. So obviously they need their present and they're doing something. Then they try to understand what are the whales doing at that time. Are they socializing? Are they just gathering together? Are they hunting? Are they looking for prey? Are they looking for food? Other than that, um, some studies have been made using hydrophones to study over time how the amplitude changes of their calls over time regarding with environmental noise or background noise or anthropogenic noise. And the ocean is getting to be a noisier and noisier place um, and that's something that we're starting to get concerned about. Sounds like we discovered what most of us might have guessed. The ocean is getting noisier. So what does this mean for whales? And what can be done about it? The kinds of, of sounds that, that disturb orcas in particular are, uh, are, are sounds that are continuous in nature and, 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 uh, and, and broadband, we would say, that cover a lot of frequencies. So big, big problem is ship noise and boat noise. Um, shipping noise, noise produced by large ships is extremely loud and it goes on for a long time when it, as a ship passes so it can blot out the soundscape easily for you know half an hour when as far as killer whales go, are concerned every time a ship goes by. Smaller boats um, can be much noisier um, really for their, for their size than the large ships. Outboard motors in particular are bad. Pile driving or even seismic exploration are all increasing the noise levels in the ocean in which the whales have to live, they have to accommodate, whether they have to speak louder or find other dialects to communicate is all part of the research we're undertaking. The consequences of noise for killer whales is that it uh, affects their communication in particular. It, it, uh, we call this masking. It can simply block out their communication or make it much harder for them to communicate over, over longer distances. So that could have a variety of impacts um, from uh, just uh, affecting the cohesiveness of pods to affecting the way that the pods interact with each other. Sound also affects the ability of killer whales um, to, to use echolocation. They have to hear. These echolocation sounds are, are, are quite quiet compared to the sounds that they're producing. So killer whales can only compensate by, by 
making their sounds louder, um, and they can only do that to a certain extent. We really need to understand the impacts of what we're doing uh, in the ocean to make sure that we modify our behavior slightly so that we have less of an impact on, on some of these endangered species or, or whales in general. Today we had a chance to take a closer look at whale research. Thanks to the team at Ocean Networks Canada, and thanks to you for being part of our ongoing explorations here at Ocean Alive.